Not long ago, I made a review of the Sarma TST CP15 combat backpack that was sent to me by Verustalika. And I declared this really a heritage item, a, an item that you're going to be able to pass down to your grandchildren and beyond. It is just essentially bomb-proof. Well, I've upgraded it since that last video. Vrusalika sent me two of these side pouches known as the Sarma TST General Purpose Size Pouch. Uh, if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Vrusalika for sending out these two side pouches so that I could attach them to my combat backpack and share them with you. So I don't expect this to be a very long video. Most of the information will be in the video description below if you are interested in them. But what I wanted to do is look at the features of these side pouches and compare them against another side pouch that I brought out from another manufacturer and show you why I feel the Sarma pouches are superior in every way. Now what I'll do is I'll just bring the camera in a little closer, compare the two pouches side by side. But the other thing I want to do is show you how they're actually attached to the backpack, it may help some people out. All right, now let's get started. All right, I took one of the side pouches off of the bag itself so that I could show you the pouch in detail, especially the Powell's webbing on the back. Of course, that's going to play into how it attaches to the backpack in a few moments' time. But I just want to go over this one. I have another one here from another manufacturer that uh, I'll share with you so you can see the side by side comparison. But as I mentioned, all the information, the technical information, specifications. I'm going to put in the video description rather than repeat it all now. A couple of reasons. Um, one, shorten the video down a little bit, but also they apply to this pouch itself. And this is a size medium. They do come small, medium, large, and extra large size pouches, depending on what size you want, how much you feel you're going to need to carry, but also what backpack you're going to be attaching to. And that's very important because I have the 15 liter combat backpack. And in the other video, one of the things I said is that if you can get it in there and get the zipper shut, it will carry it. The problem is, is you can easily overload that backpack with weight. It won't hurt the backpack, but it'll just make it heavy to carry on your shoulders. So I intentionally decided to go with the medium for a couple of reasons. It kept down the chances of me overpacking my backpack to, to a smaller amount, and it is still large enough to put a Mount Nalgene bottle. I want to show you that right now. So Nalgene bottle, and this is kind of what I was looking for. Something at least the size of an Nalgene bottle. I could have gone larger, but I decided to go that one so it fits in there perfectly, as you can see, even with the, the Human Gear cap cap on top, which is a little bit taller. So uh, there's a little bit of extra space inside. You may be able to get a slightly larger bottle inside, but, you know, I did try getting it inside with one of the... Uh, insulated sleeves around the outside for use out here in the winter. Not quite big enough for that. Now, maybe the large or the extra large would have been, but uh, that's okay. If it's that cold, I have an insulated bottle I'll bring, or I will put it right in the center of my backpack and keep it uh, not frozen longer there. All right, so let's get back to the pouch itself. So one of the things, of course, and this applies to the backpack, and if you go back and watch the other video on the backpack, all the materials are the same. They're nothing but the highest quality military specification materials in the construction of this device. These will last forever. I just, I just don't know how you could damage in these unless you did it willfully. They're not going to rip accidentally, that's for sure. So the highest grade, 1,000 Kodora nylon on the outside. Uh, the inside, and this is significant, it's probably easiest to show it right here, is the waterproof vulcanizing, I'm going to say that's the best term for it, but the waterproof coating, which is bonded into the nylon, not just a surface thing, which will flake off over time. So that's lifetime as well. One of the cool things about this pouch is that it has a drawstring collar at the time, like a little storm collar. And that does a couple of things, of course. One, it does help keeping dirt and water and things from getting in. But it also means that you're less likely, if you've got a lot of small things in there, from them falling out. So all you really have to do is just draw the drawstring up. The other thing is the drawstring is at the back. And I didn't appreciate this until I really compared it against another backpack I have where the drawstrings are at the front. And they also always seem to be dangling down. With the drawstring at the back, it's less likely to fall out and drop down. In fact, you could just drop it down in the opening inside and keep it all secure. So drawstring at the top, it does extend the height of it, what, two inches, maybe two and a half inches at the most, but it gives you a little bit more if you want. All the edges have, and it's not 
tape, or uh, not tape, what is it? It is full on nylon webbing, reinforcing the edges all the way around, as you can see across the top. Another cool feature is the flap itself. It's got a tuck on the corners so that when it comes down over, it actually covers the corner so you don't have, you know, exposed corners like a vat where stuff can get in, water or debris or anything else or things falling out. So it is really, really weatherproof. And of course, military grade side release buckles. I don't know, unless you stepped on it, maybe not then, I don't know how you would damage it. And there is just a little bit of extension room on it that you can make it a little longer. And that would allow for, if you put something a little bit taller and is sticking up a little bit with the draw collar and you still need it to be able to get it closed, you're still gonna have just a little bit of room there. Otherwise, you know, it's probably, well, it's worked perfectly the way that I want it to. Now, let's go around to the back. Uh, Traditional PALS webbing. Nothing special to see here, really. All the highest quality materials, well stitched down the center. This will match up with any PALS compatible backpack that you may have, so that's not an issue. By the way, they do come in other colors, black and woodland camel, I want to say. Of course, I'll be putting the links in where you can go see. So if you have a backpack of a different make or a different color and you want to see if you can match it, then uh, they have, well, they have the three. I'm pretty sure it's the three, the black, the green, and the woodland camel. The thing I want to say about these PALS webbing straps is, and I was a little confused for a moment anyway, there's no snaps on this. There's no snaps on this at all. It's a reinforced piece of nylon. There's a hard piece of plastic inside of, right inside of there, and that's intentional. You, well, without them, okay, let's put it this way. Snaps rust. So when you put these on your backpack, regardless if it's this one or one from another manufacturer, good chances you're leaving it on there. You're not taking it off at least for a long time or if you're going to sub out for a different type of a pouch on it, like maybe a larger pouch or something, maybe a first aid pouch. I have a first aid pouch on the outside of my backpack right now with a uh, small PALS compatible pouch on it and it has metal snaps, as does the one from the other manufacturer I want to share with you. But when they rust, that's it. I don't know, you know, you'd know. you be lucky if you got it off without damaging it, and it's, go it's just going to be a mess. This, and you'll see in a minute how it works, but there's no fear of these ever rusting, but they still remain really, really secure. All right, like I said, there's not a lot to see here. The highest quality materials. In a moment, I'll put it on the backpack to show you how it works. But first, let me reach down and find that other pouch that I have here, right here somewhere. All right, here it is sitting on my knee. Now, this, I'm not going to name the manufacturer. Uh, I got these off of Amazon. I did buy two of them. And, uh, you know, they're a pretty good quality pouch. They feel like, well, the nylon is not quite the same, but it still feels like a pretty good quality nylon. Looking at it, you can tell a slight bit of difference. It looks like the weave is a bit tighter on the Sarma ones than it is on this one. So I'm not going to fault the nylon, but here's where things start to differ. Oh, well, the easiest thing I guess to do would be to bring in the other pouch as well, back in again. Here's the coating inside of the Sarma. Here's the coating inside of this pouch. No comparison, really. No comparison in quality. And this is the type that over time will start to flake a little bit. It's not right in the nylon. It seems to be bonded to the surface. And I've seen older pouches like this where it does start to flake over time. So uh, just be aware of that when you're looking at other pouches, if you're not looking at the Serma. What else can I say about this one? Oh, obviously it does have additional molly on the outside of that. So you could put a pouch on top of a pouch. You know what I'm saying. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but you could if you really wanted to. Plastic D-rings that give you some options for attaching it, I guess. Uh, all the molly is down the back. Now, there's no flap on this. It is a zipper. It appears to be a relatively good plastic zipper. There are zips on both sides to bring it up towards the center. Couple comments here is, yes, they are under a bit of a flap, but that's not going to be waterproof. Not for very long. It'll keep dust and dirt and other stuff out of your out of your pouch. It's going to keep you from losing things, but it's not going to keep water out. Oh, I don't think I showed you this. Both of them have drain holes. I know somebody will ask, so there they are. There's drain holes on both of them, just in case you do get water. Like if my Nalgene was to crack and leak inside, it's not going to stay sloshing around inside of there. Um, yeah, I, I was prepared to accept this back these pouches as is, 
with the zipper, knowing that they could, if I was out in the rain, they could get very wet inside. But uh, how much better is it if there's no chance of it getting wet inside because you have the flap on it like this? And here's the other thing. Here's the, re the thing that probably concerned me most about this. It does appear to be a good quality plastic zipper, but that's what it is, a plastic zipper. And they've been known to fail. Over time, they could fail on you. And then you're not able to get your pouch shut. Well, certainly with the other one, that's just not a thing. It can't happen. You have the drawstring collar around the top. You've got the fold-over pouch with the pleats on either side. And you've got the side-release buckles. Simplicity at its best, but not just for the sake of simplicity, but simplicity and eff effective functional design. That's what it's all about. Now, the last thing I'll show you on the other pouch is, like I mentioned, the, the um, dome snaps on the bottom. They work fine right now. These are pretty new, actually. I had them for a little while before Versa Lika sent out those ones. The quality of the straps, it's not bad. There is a, uh, something like a plastic liner running down inside of that for stiffening. I will tell you now, there's no plastic liner inside of the one from Sarma. It doesn't need it, really. The only place it needs it, and you'll see why, is right down here where it's doubled over. And you'll see, well, like I said, I'll show you as I put it on the backpack. However, there is a, th okay, the webbing to start with is thinner to start with, as well as the plastic liner running down the side. Overall, this isn't a bad pouch, cost effective, but over the long term, are you really going to get your money's worth out of this one? That's the only question you really have to ask yourself. I will say that these are less expensive than these by a considerable difference. These are certainly more expensive, but you, this is truly a case if you get what you pay for. This is so much better a pouch. If you're going to have a backpack, a good backpack like the Sarma, and you want it to last for as long as possible, then you may as well spend a little extra money and get the good quality pouches to go with it. All right, so that's all that I wanted to show you about the pouches themselves in a side-by-side -side comparison. Now I just want to show you putting it on the backpack itself. All right, the first thing I'm going to say is don't do this in cold weather. Do it at home. Don't do it out here in the woods. Uh, I, I have these fingerless gloves on because I need the dexterity for the work I'm about to do, but I can feel the cold out here and my fingers are starting to get a little numb. So this is something you do at home. Like I said, most people, myself included, these will go on the pack and they'll stay on there unless there's some reason to take them off. I can't see what that might be, but uh, you never know, right? Okay, so let's put these on. All right, so you have rows of the PALS webbing all the way up and down the side. You have to decide where you want it on the backpack, to ride high, to ride low. Uh, I chose to ride it, well, I'll show you where it is on the other side, the one that's still attached. I chose to have it ride towards the bottom, so it's not as low as it can go, but it's one up from the bottom. So that's where I'm also going to put it on this side. And it's, it's not hard. It's a little finicky, if you, not finicky, that's not the right word. It does require some dexterity and warm fingers to go with this. But all you really need to do is start where you want it to go. So I'm going to be using it. There are th three channels running down the length of the backpack. I'm going to choose to use, which one did I use on the other side? Just wanted to make sure. Right, I chose the, outs the outside two. Or actually it runs down all three at the same time. So let's just start there. And you only run it through one at a time. It's easy when you first get started. Run it right down. And now you're going to go through the first layer of loops on the pouch itself. So I've gone underneath one webbing po uh, point on the backpack. I'm folding it back and I'm going through the webbing point on the pouch. Both sides, of course. In a minute, it gets a little hard for you to see. I'll be able to see what I'm doing, but you won't, so I'll just uh, fast forward it to the end. All right, so you can see what I've got so far. Now the next one, I'm gonna put run it under the next webbing loop. on both sides and now I run it under the webbing loop on the pouch itself. Yeah, it takes a, a bit of time but you're only doing this once like I mentioned. Again under the webbing loop on the backpack this is where it starts to get a little sh harder as I run out of length again under the webbing loop on the pouch 
and I'm all but finished. Now, I want to make sure that I get the strap, the shoulder strap out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. So I have one more webbing loop on the backpack. My fingers do not want to work, they're cold. Here we go. All right, so that's under the last or the bottom set of loops. Okay, now here's what's different. At this point, if you had one of the other pouches, you'd be snapping it shut with two dome snaps. We don't have them, so what we do, and here's the reason why it's a stiff piece of reinforced nylon at this point, is we're gonna fold it back on itself. You can bend it just enough to fold back and slide up underneath. Hopefully this is picking up well on the camera. You can actually give it a bit of a tug to give it the length it needs. And that's it. Fully attached. That is not coming off. Not unless you want it to come off, and then it's a bit of work to come off or put on as you saw. All right, that's everything there is to see about these pouches. All right, so that's, like I said, there's not a lot to see about these pouches. I have the two of them on the side of the bag, and you know, it's really added quite a bit of room on the outside of the bag for a few things. Now, one I mentioned, I have the my Nalgene in the one on this side. I've got a, a folding pocket saw, a toiletry kit, and a few other things, some rope, some fat wood, all stuck down inside of this one. Oh, there is my first aid pouch attached to the front. I think I've shown that in the other video. Uh, so it's there for rapid access if I need it. Um, I'm not gonna speak to the backpack itself, of course, because you can go back and watch that review on this backpack. It, it just seemed to make a big difference in the functionality, the versatility of the pack to have those. Have I, was I gonna do this again? I may have gone to a size large, but I caution you on that. Don't necessarily get the biggest one that you can. It's only a few more dollars. I know that's one way of justifying it. But the problem is, is if you're anything like me, you can find yourself overpacking this long <laughs> and having it too heavy. Because remember, there's no frame in this backpack. And the only padding that's in against your back is the padding you put in there. So, and it's not like a very heavy shoulder strap. It's, it's a minimalist shoulder strap as well. So you do want to keep the weight to a minimum as best you can. But this gives me a few options. Now, a few other things that I have done here, I think this shows. One of those Griffin... Griffin locks? Griffin locks, I think they're called. So I can hang a pair of gloves on the outside. I do have the Molly so I can put my first aid kit on. A straps with some uh, pals or Molly attachment points that I've put on here for things like a shovel if I want to. And, uh, oh yeah, I put a set of straps on the bottom as well. Just a set of cheap straps. I gotta get a better set of straps than I have down there. Okay, not much more to say about these. Uh, oh, yes, there is one more thing. I do want to show you this because this I had to give some thought to. So the pack, backpack has compression straps. I made a point of showing these uh, in the other video and they have this metal, what they call it, G-lock. And it's intended to hook in very quickly and easily on the webbing on the front of the backpack. When you do, that may, the, the pouches may interfere with where the straps are going to work. So, as you can see, I have the strap running right at the top of this pouch. So, it's right there. It's not interfering with the pouch or the pouch isn't interfering with the straps, if you want to put it that way. But at the bottom, it does. So, I had to extend the strap for the, the compression strap out to a longer length so it would wrap around the outside of the pouch itself before it reached over and finally hooked in on the side. Now, you know, I looked at that and I said, I don't know, is that a good idea? And then I realized it's still doing exactly the same function. If these pouches are not as full as uh, you can possibly get them, which is pretty easy to do, honestly, then this actually helps to compress everything, including the pouches, in a little tighter so it's all in tighter against your back. So just something to consider. I can't change where the compression straps are attached to the bag, but I can change where the pouch sits on it. One, one spot or the other, one of the, one of the two straps is gonna be interfered with by that. But I think that's gonna be true with any set. Now, I guess, yes, there is one other thing I could have done, run it in behind, but there's really not a lot of room to run it in behind. It would have to go underneath uh, the Molly webbing. I could have done that, and I may do that yet, you know, but here's one of the things I found. Is really, this gives me another attachment point. If I want to hang something else off it, again, be careful, don't hang too much stuff off of your pack. But if you do have one more thing, like um, 
I'm wearing a vest and underneath the, my jacket today because, like I said, it's cold. I have a little stuff sack for it. I was able to put that on and just hook it onto one of these straps and compress it down because I had no more room inside of the bag itself. All right, that's it. If you have any comments or questions about the side pouches from Sarma, uh, well, made by Sarma, sold through Verustalika, put them in the comments section below. The links to where you can take another look at these pouches will be in the video description below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.